ceiling. So just lift and roll the shoulders. Lift your toes and place your toes down. Breathing in, turn the head to the left. Come back to the centre and turn the head to the right. Come back to the centre and then just hands on the waist and once again turn the head to the left. Come back to the centre and turn the head to the right. And come to the centre. And then drop the hands, lift and roll the shoulders. And then this is an Ayurveda sequence for the back. Breathing in, hands up, clasp and reverse. Stretching up, breathing out to one side, just bounce slightly. Breathing in, come to the centre and breathing out, bounce slightly to the other side, just chin to the chest. And I can see I'm not perfect, but the head should be halfway equally between the arms. Mine wasn't. <laughs> and then breathing out, turn slightly to one side. And again, you can bounce slightly in and out. Come to the centre and breathing out, turn to the other side. And just bounce in and out. Come to the centre, lower the arms. Lift and roll the shoulders again and clasp the hands behind you, aim the knuckles of the, your hand to the ground. Open your shoulders, open your heart, open the chest. You can stay looking ahead or if your neck will allow this, just gently raise the chin upwards and the eyes go upwards. Eyes upwards disconnects the mind from the stress centres. So this is quite mindful in its application and calming. But then bring the head back up to the centre, release the arms, and then just very, very gently slide the hands down the legs. You may want to just move your feet slightly to hit with the part of out already. Hands onto the shins and half lift, lengthening from the tailbone to the top of the head. But when you're here, just linger and just sway from side to side. So bringing one shoulder slightly forward, coming back, and then the other shoulder slightly forward. And then breathing out next time you breathe out, soften the knees and soften the elbows, curl in slightly. Breathing in, lengthening, half lift. And stay here as you breathe out. And then softening the knees, press the feet into the ground and roll up vertebra by vertebra to standing. And breathing in, hands up, palms together. And then just circle the wrists down. And then opening and closing the hands. Lift and roll the shoulders again. And then come once more to bring the hands to the heart centre. Soften the knees, circle the arms up, stretching up. Really stretch, palms together. Reverse. And then come once more to one side. Come to the centre. And breathing out, come to the other side. Come to the centre. Breathing out gently, turn to one side. Come to the centre and gently turn to the other side. And come to the centre. Lower the arms to shoulder height, subtly or slightly bend the elbows. And we're going to come to our bird flight, which the purpose of this is to move all the joints. So if you're stiff in your shoulders, bend your elbows more and don't lift up quite so high. 
So you can feel the feet pressing into the ground, the ankles are moving, knees up to the hips, the ribs slightly as you lift up and then lower your arms, the um, wrists, fingers, elbows, shoulders. Just such a Tai Chi style, gentle movement. And then just bringing the hands to release and relax. Lift and roll one shoulder and then lift and roll the other shoulder. And then hands on the waist. And we're going to test our balance today by lifting the heels. And then the heels will still be lifted, but just lower the heels so that they're a millimetre off the ground so the weight goes into the heels. It allows you to stand up a little bit more, stretch in a little bit and then lower the heels. And then carry on to bend the knees, tummy in, engage the abdominal muscles, and neck long, look at the ground, maybe your bottom goes out away from you a little bit, and then pressing the feet into the ground as you come to upright. And then releasing the hands. Lift and roll the shoulders again, and then just slide the hands down the knees, down to the shins, half lift. Breathing out, soften, bend in. Again, half lift. And stay here as you breathe out. Soften the knees, press the feet down, and roll up vertebra by vertebra to standing. And breathing in, lift the hands up, stretch the fingers. And then just circle the wrists down. Lift and roll the shoulders. And just come to tap between, at the end of the collarbone. Yeah, there, K27 point. So this is tapping into our vitality and essence. K stands for kidneys and the Chinese meridians. But not to think of kidneys as kidneys, or I suppose it is, of course, but just think of it as our general vitality and our essence. So it's just um, rejuvenating us. And then, very, very mad, a very nice uh, rejuvenator, but is slightly bonkers, is just to tap your head. Again, it's very hard to hold tension when it's your head's being tapped, and then just very, very gently lower the hands and lift and roll the shoulders. And we come to a breathwork exercise as you breathe in, hands out, and then hands back, palms down as you hands out, come back, and lower the hands. When you're ready, we'll do this a few more times. Palms up and out, back, palms down, and back, and in. And again, palms up and out, back, down. And then just take the feet a little bit wider apart to sway from side to side. So you're moving all your energies. So energy moving is the opposite of stagnation. So you're less likely you're, you're just keeping everything flowing. As we are all energy, we want everything to move and flow. Interestingly, um, money could be considered an energy. I always find that quite an interesting concept. But if you hoard your money and don't spend it, then it kind of, it's a, you know, you need energy, money needs to flow. It's like a mind Clog, fill. Clogs you up. Clogs you up, yes. So yes. then just very gently to stand so 
and lift and roll your shoulders. And as Julia mentioned, that COVID spacing has been very prevalent. This is an upper um, respiratory movement, which is brilliant, given that you haven't got COVID. If you had long COVID, you might feel quite tiring. But we've done this before, so breathing in. Breathing in. Last one. Lift and roll the shoulders, but lift, lift and drop a shoulder and lift and drop the other one. Just thinking of your shoulders a bit stiff. And then lift and roll the shoulders. Bring the hands to the heart. Just take an in and an out breath and just drop your gaze to the tips of the fingers. This is called Hakini Mudra. And then just release. And we're going to come down onto the earth. Just come down to sitting with our legs out. If anybody wants a bolster or block or anything else, then just say. So Sue is just getting bolsters or blocks or whatever. So while we're waiting uh, for her, um, just lift and roll the shoulders and breathing in, raise one arm. Slide it over chin to chest. You can perhaps come down to your elbow. Tummy in, press the hand or elbow down to come up. And we'll just come over to the other side to balance ourselves up. Chin to chest. Come over, you might want to come to your elbow. And then just coming up. Come to circulation of the feet by toes up and toes away. Just a couple of times. And then circle the ankles in one direction. And then circle the ankles in the opposite direction. And then just sit up, just notice how gravity pulls us down. We always tend to slump. If you wanted to be very yogic, your fingers would face forwards, but that might be uncomfortable for you. So be comfortable and have your hands as you want them. You press your hands down, lift the chest. And if your gaze and neck will allow, just raise your eyes and your chin slightly upwards. So this gives space. The digestive system, it lifts the chest. It, funnily enough, can be classified as a backbend, as a backbend is classified by lifting at the chest, and then just bring your head upwards. And then just very gently, take your right hand behind your back, palm upwards. Hope you can see, and then join hands, palms together or thereabouts and turn to look over your right shoulder. So I've got my right hand behind my back and I'm looking over my right shoulder. If you've started the other way, it's left hand and left shoulder. And then bring your head to turn over the other shoulder and then come back to the center. Release the hands and just circle the wrists one way and circle the wrists the other way. And then take um, your left hand behind your back, so the left palm is facing outwards. Take your right hand to prayer and then turn to look 
I've got this one's shoulder, I'm getting muddled up. Uh, turn to look over your left shoulder. I hope that makes sense. I might have. And then turn back to look over the other shoulder. Sorry if I've confused you. And then you look very stiff. So, what would you like? Your shoulders? Just lift. So, lift and roll the shoulders and lift and roll the shoulders. So, just bend the knees. Just rub under the legs, rub down the tops of the legs or pat them. And we're going to come to find our way to uh, lying on the mat. I'm aware that you can't see me, Julia. So, I'm, mind you, I think everybody else can't really see you once you're lying on the mat. So, just I come can't see you. to, <laughs> I'll hopefully give clear instructions than I just did. So just stretch your left foot and relax and release and stretch your right foot. And we talked about the hips yesterday. This just opens up the hip a little bit more. So breathing in, extend the right heel and raise the right arm above the head, relaxing the right elbow. And then very gently turn the head to the left. Take an in and an out breath here. And when you're ready, bring your head back to centre. And on your next out breath, lower your right arm back down alongside you and you totally relax your right foot, right foot. Just let everything relax. And then come to bring your attention to the left side. Extend the left heel. Bend the left elbow and then raise the left arm to your capacity above the head. The more you bend the elbow, if it's too much to move, then just place your hand on your waist. And then turn the head to the right. Stay here for an in and out breath. When you're ready, bring your head back to the center and then breathing out, lower the left arm. And then bend one knee and then the other, so that both knees are bent, both feet are on the ground, about hip width apart, maybe a little bit wider to start with. And then just very gently sway the knees from side to side. Your palms can be palms down on the floor or resting on the abdomen. And your sway can be a little bit or quite a lot, depending on how you're feeling today. And then very gently come to the centre the knees and now a couple of pelvic tilts so flattening the back to the ground as if you were going to lift your bottom up but you don't and then moving the in the opposite direction so the tailbone goes towards the ground and you get a little gap under your lower back And then keeping your right foot more or less where it is, adjust it if you need to. Hug your left knee into the chest. Just check that your chin is not shooting up to the ceiling, that the back of the neck is long and comfortable. And just make little circles with your left knee moving in one direction. So this is very much for the hips. You're holding your knee with both hands and just circling, giving or exploring um, a full rotation of the top of the leg and the hip socket. And 
And then we'll ready reverse that circle so that you move in the opposite direction. And then drop your hands to underneath your left um, thigh. I'm clasping my hands to give me support. And just raise the left leg up to the ceiling. You can keep the knee bent if you want to and extend the left heel. And just feel that stretch all the way along the back of the leg. If you've got any trap nerve. And then just circle the ankle a couple of times in one direction and then in the other direction. And then bending the left knee into the chest again. You might find that your left knee comes slightly closer to your chest as it's relaxed and eased. And then just place your left foot on the floor. And just take a couple of sways from side to side of the knees. And then just very gently, keeping your left foot where it is, but please do adjust it if you feel you need to, hugging the right knee into the chest. And then very gently with the right knee hugged into the chest, make little circles in one direction, holding the right knee. Just easing off the hip. And then circle the knee in the opposite direction. And then dropping the hands to underneath the right thigh, clasping the hands to support the leg. And then you can keep your knee bent if you prefer, but extend the right leg up to the ceiling and then extend the right knee. You feel that stretch at the back of the leg. And then release that stretch by circling the ankle a couple of times in one direction. And then a couple of times in the opposite direction. And then just very gently bend your right knee and hug your right knee back into the chest again. And still holding the right knee, let the right knee drift to arm's length or a comfortable length away from you. And then breathing out, hug the right knee back into the chest. And carry on in your own breath pattern a few times. Just letting the knee drift away. And then letting the knee hug back in. And still keep the right knee hugged into the chest and let the left knee join it. Hug both knees into the chest. And then supporting the right leg if you need to, place the right foot on the floor. And then we'll do the same on the left side, hugging the left knee into the chest, letting it move to arm's length or to a comfortable length away from you. Just hugging in and letting the knee. 
So here we're working on the Apana energy, which is the foundational energy, and very much like a building, if you want to get your um, energy straight, foundational energy is a good place to start, because everything else is affected if the base energy is out. And it's the same with our feet. If your feet are out, your ankles are out, the rest of the posture is kind of impacted in some way. Like a building, the foundations are wonky and then that's the rest of the building is impacted. And then hugging the left knee into the chest. Let the right knee join it. Both knees are hugged into the chest. Separate your knees if you need space, tummy space. And then let both knees drift away to arm's length. Hugging both knees into the chest. Both knees drift away to arm's length. Hugging both knees into the chest. I'm just doing that a few times. And with both knees hugged in, just slightly begin to rock from side to side. And how much you rock is up to you a little bit, or you can go almost to the side where your backs of your uh, upper arms connect to the ground. Your head is slightly rolling too, and you're going with your head over some acupressure points. The back of the head, so this should feel quite soothing. Enjoy the massaging across the lower back, the top of the bottom. The lower back is being given space as we're stretching in this semi supine position. And then very gently bring the knees more together or have the knees move as one. So then as begin to circle both knees in the same direction. They don't have to be completely together, you can separate them still. So you're almost massaging around the base of the spine. Both knees move in the same direction. And again, your circle can be small or large. And then you can reverse your circle, moving in the opposite direction. And again, just massaging over the lower back. And then you just very, very gently supporting the legs underneath, holding the thighs, place one foot and then the other foot down back onto the ground. And just a couple of pelvic tilts. Again, just bringing movement into the lower back. And then we're going to roll to the side to the right if the right is available to you, but just Ultimately, we're going to be coming onto our hands and knees. Take your time so as not to disturb any energy that you cultivated in practice. And then coming when you're ready to your hands and knees. Just 
just once you're there, just sway your bottom from side to side. And then bring your bottom towards your heels, it doesn't have to come to the heels, and just connect your elbows to the ground. Drop your chin to the chest. Dip your back as you breathe in, coming up to your hands and knees to tabletop. Then round your back, chin to chest, and bring your bottom towards your heels, elbows to the ground. Dip your back as you scoop through, coming up to tabletop. Dropping your chin to your chest and rounding. Dipping your back. And then finally come to tabletop and just sway your bottom from side to side. And as you sway your hips, in one direction, look over the opposite shoulder and then the other, other way. And then come to drop your bottom to the side again to come to a seated position. If anybody prefers chairs, I can get chairs out if you wanted to keep them all right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So sit either with your um, feet out or sit in a cross leg position whatever works for you and feel that you can move as well and we're just before we come on to the reiki part just bring your hands or mentally bring your thoughts to the base chakra and as you breathe in breathe in mentally saying so to yourself and breathing out mentally say hum with your focus at the base chakra, so, and then breathing out, home. Your hands might stay where they are, but mentally you're moving up a tiny bit further between the base chakra, the perineum really, and the navel, so that's uh, almost where the middle line goes, but um, breathing in here, it's the sacral chakra, root so, and breathing out the thumb. Connects to the kidneys again, that overall essence of vitality and of water. And again, your hands may, might stay where they are. Focus now on the navel, behind the navel, in front of the spine. So as you breathe in, and hum as you breathe out. Connecting to the digestive juices. And transformation of life, what we eat, what we take in in life, and how we transform that experience of the food to be what we are, we are what we eat. And then just move the hands to the heart, below the heart. So as you breathe in, and hum as you breathe out. And this is the element of air. So in one tradition, the colour here is pink, and also green, but in other traditions it can be blue because the colour there is blue, so you start mixing all the colours. And then just moving the hands to the throat, and here again traditionally this is a blue, it's a deeper blue. And we're coming to the element of um, ether here. The throat connects not just bodily between head and uh, body, but it connects emotion between um, the mind and of what we want to do physically we might not agree with what we might mentally want to do. So, sorry to interrupt you, didn't you say do something like that? It's just been really, it's glitching there. I can't sit in the system. Do you want a chair? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want a chair? Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm sitting on my Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 that's helping. Would you yeah. have yeah. a chair? Well, let me see how this goes. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It helps. That is not so flat. Yeah, I'm sitting yeah. Down. I just, yeah. And then just bring your hands to the uh, forehead, connecting to the third eye. So as you breathe in, and hum as you breathe out. Pineal and pituitary glands connected here. I should have said the thyroid and parathyroid were at the throat area. And then just connect the hands to the 
top of the head is the top of the crown, it's called the Sarasthara Chakra. So as you breathe out and hum, as you breathe in, hum as you breathe out a couple of times. And then just release the hands, and we're going to come to Reiki. So for here, you need to be comfortable. So if you would like a chair, oh, I'm going to get a chair. Lying down all right? Can I lie down or sit up? You can lie down or sit up. What do you, what, oh, I'm happy lying down. Yeah. All right, I'll lie down then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just absolutely lie down. Yeah. If you want to take a colour or choose a colour, take a crystal and hold a crystal. If you want to mm. take them to hold a crystal. And Sarah, you won't have magic your crystals at home particularly. So just imagine a colour. We've got all kinds of colours here from mm -hmm. pink one. to um, mauve. Uh, mm -hmm. You can take more than one. So you, there's no right or wrong. You just imagine a colour that suits mm -hmm. you today. I'm going to be pink. So Sue's going to be pink. <laughs> Julia's going to be like a, like a black, almost not quite obsidian, but it's all black. That's grounding. Black is grounding. Okay. Mm -hmm. And earthing you. So what's the pink? So de-stresses because it takes all the thoughts out. Pink is love and compassion okay. at the heart. Mm -hmm. So you can lie down if you want to. You can sit up if you want to. I seem to have got very too uh, creaky peak in here. I've <laughs> got good sound effects today, so. Yeah. <laughs> so Reiki is um, um, an energy healing. You've got lots of um, little um, energy points, particularly the hands. So the colour to imagine here in this system, because all systems are different, is indigo. And you just bring your hands almost over your eyes. If you don't want to touch your face, that's fine. I know some people don't. But just you are closing your eyes. You're bringing your hands over your eyes. As introspection, you're, it's almost like palming. Your eyes are picking up the energy from the hands. Your head might be, if it's lying on the floor, it's relaxed. If you are sitting up, then your head is slightly forward. So Reiki um, can be used anytime, anywhere to calm you down. It's viewed as a, this is a self-healing practice. We haven't got the full time here, but the opening postures, and this would be the opening posture, you would hold normally for between three and five minutes. You're shutting out the outside world. And so the, there is introspection. So it's the outside, the external world that disturbs us, that can cause disturbance in our existence. And so this is a withdrawal from that, it's calming. You can let your hands rest slightly to the side of the eyes too. Any time that you fused out or feel totally stressed out, this can be quite helpful. And in fact, sometimes you'll see people put their head in their hands, bring their head forward when they're feeling really stressed. If you're seated, you can put your hands in your head and rest your elbows either on your um, upper legs or on a table, and that will ease your lower back as well. And then just very gently bring the hands to the top of the crown of the head, almost cradling your hands around the top of the head. Bring your elbows in if opening your elbows out is stressful for your shoulders. So you won't necessarily feel this or be aware of it, but there are lots of little dents on the top of the head. And each little dent represents an acupressure point. You've got some major ones over the crown of the head. Real dense. And these relate to body functions that we don't necessarily think about. And soon your Indian head massage you would have come across these. Yeah, your Indian head massage. You're again deeply soothing to have your hands cradling your
right over the head. And again, I'm not keeping to the time, you don't have the time, but the next movement is to just slide your hands to the back of the head. And again, you've got some acupressure points here. The weight um, of the hands on the back of the head can be quite soothing as well. And um, in um, some of the anti-cancer um, yogic training, holding the hands on the back of the head can be helpful in um, when there's nausea, when there's a treatment going on. The head slightly forward, just soothing. And just leaning the back of the head and bringing the hands around to the front of the throat. Some people don't like holding the throat, they feel panicked, but just one, I've got one hand on top of the other around the throat area. Again, I find this very soothing, the heat from the hands. And you're balancing here, you've got the thyroid, that butterfly shaped gland, which can often be impacted by stress it's linked to the adrenals. I don't know why, but it is. So when the adrenals are exhausted, sometimes a thyroid and its autoimmune things can come through. There is a connection in the thyroid. Just relaxing the head. And then just let your hands slide down to the heart. I mean, if you where you're lying, it might not be convenient, but around the heart area, it might be above the chest, it might be slightly low, below it can be one hand above, one hand below. You're connecting into your energetic circuitry and then just drop the hands to the navel just cradle your navel area so this is the digestive energy it's also our inner power how we how we present the world a sweeping statement people can be lacking in this um, the chakra, they're not confident, it's, it's inner confidence, it's um, that kind of self-belief as well as how we transform food and thoughts, experiences. And then to the groin, you just join your thumbs and join your two second fingers, so you almost form a, a triangle just to rest your hands to connecting to the groin and lower abdominal area. So the lower chakras, particularly um, the base and the next chakra, the two lower chakras, relate to our sense of survival. So you know, are we safe? Have we got our basics sorted? And people who are very stressed, fizzing out in their head too much, don't ground themselves necessarily. Um, they're, they're too much in their head. And so drawing the energy down and focusing on the base chakras balances that head fizzing. And it's the same with um, people who um, have epilepsy. They, they fizz out in the, you know, their brains fuse out. It's like a, and they're not connected. So Grounding somebody can be very, very helpful. And then you're lying on your um, backs, um, so you don't have to do this, but you can just slide your hands underneath your back and just hold your lower back, almost where the kidney area is. Again, connecting to that vitality. If your hands don't go there, then just rest them um, on your front. 
to the side where your kidneys would be if it's a bit of an effort to put your hands to the breath. And then if you picked a colour that appeals to you today, so the pink that connects to um, love and compassion um, is um, a sort of a heart chakra colour. And the black is a grounding colour, so it's that balance to a lot of stress. Grounding is also protection. I don't know if you've chosen a colour, Sarah, in your mind. Pink. Oh, okay. The same as Sue. So that love and compassion. And then just very, very gently release. Bring the hands to the heart either across your chest or hands to the heart in prayer position. And now take a bow for yourself for the day ahead. <laughs>